session, we will be talking about the diversity of living organisms. So, classification. Classification is the science of arranging organisms in series of groups and subgroups on the basis of their similarities and dissimilarities. So, Aristotle classified organisms on the basis of their habitat, means the place where they live, in water, in air, and on land. Basic characteristics of classification we have the nature of the cell, prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Next is cellularity, we have the unicellular and multicellular organism. Next is the level of organization, we have cell, tissue, organ, and organ system. Next is the mood of nutrition, we have autotropic and heterotropic. Classification and evolution. Time is the key factor which helps the development of complex organisms from simple ones. Charles Darwin firstly gave the idea of evolution in 1859 in his famous book which is The Origin of Species. Those organisms which have ancient body design and not change much are called primitive organisms. Those acquired certain special characters during time period are known as the advanced or higher organism. Biodiversity Biodiversity is the term used for the various forms of life found in a given area. These life forms depend on each other and on the environment and are result in a stable community. Human is also part of this diversity. It is estimated that there are 15 million different species to live on Earth, but we know only about 2 million species. Hierarchy of classification Ernest Heichel, Robert Whittaker, and Carl Hust have tried to classify all organisms into broad categories. R. Whittaker proposed the Five Kingdom system, which is widely used. This kingdom includes Kingdom Monera, Protesta, Fungi, Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia. Carl Hust divided Monera into Archaea bacteria and New bacteria. So, first we have the Kingdom Monera. This is a unicellular organism. Nucleus and cell organelles are absent. May or may not have cell wall, heterotrophic or autotrophic, able of nitrogen fixation, and reproduced by asexual methods. Bacteria, cyanobacteria, and mycoplasma. Next is we have the kingdom protesta. These are unicellular organisms. A well defined nucleus and cell organelle are present. They may be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Some of these organisms have appendage like cilia and flagella for movement. They produce by both sexual and asexual methods. Diatoms, protozoans are few examples. So next we have the kingdom fungi. Heterotrophic and eukaryotic organism. Saprophytes. Cell wall are made of chicken. Some of them live in close relationship with a certain algae and plants, forming lichens and mycorrhizae. Some of them have the ability of being multicellular, yes, mushrooms, and mesopause is an example. Next is we have the kingdom plantae. They are multicellular eukaryotic organism. This kingdom includes all the plant species. They are autotrophic and prefer their own food. They are further classified into five major divisions, the division talopaita. The body of the organism is not differentiated into organs, mainly aquatic found in marine and fresh water. Tissues for conduction of material and for mechanical strength is absent. Reproduce vegetative, asexual, and sexual reproduction. Algae are example of this division. Next is we have the division biophyta. Plant body is differentiated into leaf, root, and stem-like structure. Special conducting tissue is not present. These are known as the amphibians of plant kingdoms. Reproduce vegetative, asexual, and sexual reproduction. Monaria, Anthoceros, and Marchantea are few examples. Next is the division Tyridophyta. Plant body is differentiated into leaf, stem, and roots. They also have conductive tissue, doesn't bear seeds. Instead, they bear spores. They are also known as cryptograsm. They require water for the purpose of reproduction. Ferns and angiatoms are few examples. Next is we have the division of gymnosperm. These plants bear sneaking seeds, which means seeds are enclosed in the fruits. These are perennial, evergreen trees, and hardwood trunk. Next is we have the division of angiosperms. 
Angiosperms bear seeds covered by special organs known as fruits. They bear flowers as their reproductive organs. Embryos in seeds have special structure called cotyledons, which acts as the seed leaves at the time of germination. These are divided into two groups, we have the monopods and the dipods. Okay, so the next is we have the kingdom Annoia. The main characteristics of this kingdom are these are a creative organism of heterotropic nature. These are multicellular organisms. Their cells do not bear cell walls and chloroplasts. They are further subdivided into the following categories. The phylum Porifera. These animals bear small holes on their body surface. They are aquatic and sedentary means non-motile. They have cellular levels of body sign. They bear hard external skeleton and have canal system for the distribution of food and gases. Spongilla and cycons are examples. Next is we have the Pylum coilentata. They are aquatic animals and they have tissue levels of body sign. They have a body cavity called coilum and named as coilentata. They may solitary or colonial. They have special spinning cells called midoblast, so also known as Midoria, Hydra, Ovilia, and Pisalia are few examples of this. Next is we have the Phylum platyhelminthes, shown by lateral symmetry and are triploblastic means they have three germ layer. They are dorso ventrally flattened, also called as flatworms. They are either free living or parasite. They have tissue level of body design. They do not have any body cavity. Planarian and liver flux are example. Next is we have the pylon nematula. This animal show bilateral symmetry and are triploblastic means they have three germ layer. They are cylindrical in shape. They have pseudocoilon. They have tissue level of body design. They are mainly parasitic in nutrition. Next is we have the phylum echinodermata. They are a skinny skin organism. They are free living animals found only in marine water. They are triploblastic and they have true body cavity. They have a tube system for the purpose of movement. They show high power of regeneration. Starfish and sea urchins are examples. Next is we have the protochordata. This animal shows bilateral symmetry and are triploblastic, means they have three germ layers. They are cylindrical in shape. Next is we have the phylum vertebrata. They have not a cord at any stage of life. They have a dorsal nerve cord. They are triploblastic. They have hair and gills pouches. They have true body cavity. They include classes of Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Abs, and Mammalia. Pisces, they are aquatic found in fresh marine water. Skin is covered by scales or plates and have gills for respiration. Body is streamlined and they have two chambered heart and are cold blooded. Skeleton is made up of either cartilage or of bone. Amphibia. They are animals with uncovered skin, which helps in gas exchange. They have three chambers in the heart and they are cold blooded. They are found in both water and land. They lay eggs without hard shell. Frogs and salamanders are examples. Next is the reptilian. They are terrestrial as well as aquatic. Skin is covered by scale, both having three chambers in heart, except crocodiles. They, their eggs are covered by a hard shell. They breathe through lungs. Next is the alps. They have four chambers in heart and are warm-blooded. They breathe through lungs. They lay eggs covered by hard shell. Their body is covered by feathers and are very good flyers. They do not have teeth and bear legs and claws. All birds are examples. Next, we have the mammalia. They have four chambers in heart and one blooded. They breathe through lungs. They have mammary glands for the production of milk. They have hairs, nails, as well as sweat and oil glands.